gospel, and in that there will be multiple accounts where Jesus had went into Jerusalem. You know, when he picked his disciples, he was in the northern part of Israel, a much more rural area. Common, ordinary people lived around the Sea of Galilee, where Jerusalem was much further south. And the temple was in Jerusalem. So there was, you know, the, the northern part, he picked his followers. These guys are ordinary people. You know, they, these weren't, you know, Bible college type of guys. These are commercial fishermen. One guy was uh, a political activist. The best of the disciples would have been Judas, who was like a businessman, but he stole from the treasury and he betrayed Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. But he... His most powerful, effective ministry was in the northern part of Israel, around the Sea of Galilee. His ordinary people, but when he went into Jerusalem, where there's a lot of money and people are very self-righteous, he had a lot of difficulties, a lot of confrontations. And in, in John's Gospel, there'd be certain instances where it would share when he was speaking to these people. And again, they're in Jerusalem, and, and, and they thought... They were righteous in and of themselves, but he confronted them, saying much, you know, um, to, to, to do with all this. But, you know, in this one account, I'm going to share here, um, and in John's Gospel, you know, the seventh chapter, it said, On the last day of the feast, the great day of the feast, it says Jesus stood out in public and he said, If anybody thirsts, he said, let that person come to me and drink. Man. And he said, whoever believes in him, he said, out of their belly, the King James Version says, out of their innermost being, Jesus said, will flow rivers of living water. And that's all he said. But then the Bible kind of explains it out a little bit when it adds to the to that statement he made saying, but this Jesus spoke about the Spirit of God, said of whom those who believed in him would receive. But then it said that the Spirit was not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified. But he's, you know, he died on the cross. He was raised from the dead. And, you know, the Bible clearly re records that God the Father took Jesus back up to heaven in the book of Acts, it said, and he seated Jesus at the right hand. So he's been he's been glorified, and he poured out the Spirit of God. They, the Father and Jesus poured out the Holy Spirit. But again, so here they are, back to this feast. It went on for multiple days. Like, we're at a fairground, your graduations, congratulations to the graduate and the family, the blessing of God on you. But this is a fairground, and we know about the fair. Here in Florida, it goes on for like 10 days. You know, the Strawberry Festival up the road, same thing. But those are just fleshly events. But in Jerusalem, they had these religious feasts that would go on for multiple days. And they, these people couldn't jump on a plane. They didn't Uber. You know, they'd make, they'd have to walk. And there would be a big, you know, thing for them to do. But, and they had to keep these religious feasts. But when they got into town, they enjoyed it. You know, they'd meet up with other people, a big family reunion, and they would do their religious sacrifices. But it's just like any other thing. You know, if you go on a vacation, yeah, you enjoy your vacation, but there comes a certain point in time as you get closer to the end of it, you're like, I just want to get back home. You know, sometimes you need to have a vacation from your vacation. Yeah, but you're just, there's no place like home. But see, these people, so Jesus is watching all this transpire, right? But that, it said, on the last day of the feast, the great day of the feast, it said, Jesus just stood out in public, and he, he, he said, if anyone first, he said, let that person come to me and drink. And he wasn't talking about meet him at the pub and let's go belly up to the bar. No, he wasn't talking that way. No, but he said, let that person drink. And he said, whoever believes in him, he, he, this is in John 7, he, he made this promise. He said, whoever believes in him, he said, out of their belly, out of their innermost being, out of that, you know, that belly, that's where your spirit is. The very center of your being. That's where your spirit is. But the problem there, in that same area, that's where our stomach is at. I mentioned this earlier, but it really needs to be 
understood that's where my stomach is at and when my stomach growls i'm going to feed it food that's my fleshly appetite and if i you know sexual our sexual organs are in that same area too i don't need to go into detail about that and that's where there's a big battle there too but deeper still is where your spirit is at and see in the book of ecclesiastes god said god you know the bible said god has placed eternity in the heart of every in, in every one of us and that's there's different interpretations of that but what i believe one of the interpretations is in our very center of our being initially when god first made the very first two people who were made adam and eve wasn't just two individuals he was talking to he was talking to mankind and womankind they were created in god's image in their likeness and then you know they god gave them dominion over the rest of all creation but with, when they sinned, it wasn't just them, but all of that sin, it passed down to all of us. And our spirits die. But see, that's the part of us that most of our lifetime, we're, we're trying to, you know, satisfy that and fulfill that. You know, thank God for a high school diploma. And God bless you, you know, aspiring to, to further education or vocation. You know, but to do all that without God and and, and and seeking Him in your life, you get down the road and you say, what what, what did I do with my life? Right. But if you're seeking God first and foremost, and He knows all of us better than we know ourselves, and He knows how to relate to us and how we'll understand Him, but we, we got to make the effort. A lot of us, we don't want, we don't say, you want to give God the time of day, we're so bogged down with all this goofy stuff on the internet and all this different you know stuff the the devil you know the, all everything in these world systems it's collapsing it's falling apart quickly we had the covid stuff and it's, it's amazing what the devil he takes what happens you know globally and then for so many years covid 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 and, you know vaccine 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 mass 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 and he's all the time and he's, he's got all of our attention now there's a war in ukraine and when we don't have any time to just try to get still before God and talk to Him. But I'm telling you, if you do that, if you make that effort, God honors that. And whatever you and I feed, it gets stronger. If I'm all the time you know, feeding my flesh, my flesh becomes like a monster. And my spirit is starving, right? But if I begin to feed my spirit, you know, cry out to God. You know, begin reading the Bible. You know, you know, attend church. Talk, you know, talk to God. You start feeding your spirit; it gets stronger. And you, on purpose, you know, the the, the phone that this little monster machine is is so dangerous in our life. Let me get back to what Jesus said. He he said he's watching all this happen, and he's seeing people get to the end of this time of their life, and they're like. Is there, isn't there something more? There's got to be something more that I'm missing. And that's where he got to. And that's why he just stood out in public saying, Hey, if anyone first, Jesus said, Let that person come to me and drink. He's talking about drinking of the Spirit of God. And then he said, and he said Whoever believes in him, he said, Out of their belly." out of their very innermost being out of that from within because that's when you re when you come to jesus and, and he said these things and he'll be he'll be good to that promise right and then in receiving him he'll indwell us he receive him by what he did for us on the cross now it's, that's the most important thing to understand hey i am a sinner i need a savior amen you know we can sit there and it's easy you know, okay, I'm not a good, I'm not a perfect person, but I'm not as bad as my neighbor. I'm not as bad as the person I see in the news. No, we're all of all sin, and we all fall short of the glory of God. You know, you know, Isaiah, he, when he had an encounter with God, he saw the holiness of God, and he realized, he said, "Oh wretched man that I am." And he also, you know, he said, "Yo, woe is me." He said, "For I am undone." He said, "For." You know, I have, you know, sinful lips, and I dwell amongst the people of sinful lips. Nowadays, it's not even what we verbally say with our tongues. We're talking with our thumbs. Mm. What, we're, what we're saying. Yeah. 
But when Isaiah had that encounter, God met him. And again, you and I, we need to come to God through his son, Jesus Christ. Amen. And in doing that, he promised, you know, out of your innermost being, he said, will flow rivers of living water. That's of the Spirit of God coming up from within. You know, not just a little church every once in a while or, you know, no, there's going to be rivers of living water. That's what he promised. 